Hey guys, welcome to my video on nephrotic syndromes and I just want to start out by reminding you to please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for instant notifications of my future uploads. So I'm going to start off with a basic overview of the different general difference between nephrotic and nephritic. So nephrotic signifies changes with, which alter the glomerulus, mainly podocytes, uh, and its permeability and this is what causes the proteinuria so you have proteinuria you have edema and as a consequence you're going to see in complications thrombophilia hyperlipidemia and it can progress to chronic kidney disease and have even worse complications if not treated we talk about nephritic we're signifying changes which are so severely inflammatory to the glomerulus so much so that there's hematuria. So you, you have the hematuria, you may also have proteinuria, um, and if severe, oliguria. In general, nephrotic syndromes happen in chronic systemic diseases. I'm talking about HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, heroin injection, um, things like obesity, and I'll be doing a separate video on diabetes, but diabetes, there's a specific special type of nephrotic syndrome called diabetic uh, glomerulosclerosis. So what happens is, you know, these chronic disease processes, uh, especially HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, there may be some kind of immune complex formation, and that deposits in the kidney, causing... Um, the nephrotic syndrome. On the other hand, nephrotic syndromes happen when the glomerulus is specifically or preferentially attacked by antibodies and inflammatory cells. Nephritic is specific. So focal segmental glomerulosclerosis uh, is the most common glomerular pathology. The way that I remember the histopathology of this is a segment is a hyaline is high line between two foci. So that's my little way of saying a segment is a line between two foci, except for that is a high line. So in focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, you have hyalinization of segments of the glomerulus. And again, this is the most common glomerular pathology, but it also, it has an electron microscopy. Um, it looks like minimal change disease on electron microscopy because it has the effacement of those foot processes of the podocytes. So the distinguishing feature of FSGS is the hyalinization of the segments of the glomerulus. And this is uh, obesity is a general, a huge and very prevalent cause of this. There are also things like heroin uh, and HIV that are implicated in FSGS. The membranous nephropathy versus the membranal proliferative nephropathy. Now, this was very hard for me to get down when I started studying this. But membranous is glomerular basement membrane only. And you have subepithelial deposits which cause a spike appearance on electron microscopy. It is strongly associated with hepatitis B and C, as well as malignancies such as lung and breast cancer. Also, diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus and infections like malaria. Membrano proliferative, on the other hand, involves the GBM and the mesangium. So with membrano proliferative, you got to remember that, and this is how I remember that since there are two areas involved, they complement each other, right? Because on the membranous one, there's only one uh, area involved. In this case, there are two the GBM and the mesangium, so they complement each other. They're like a couple. And indeed, complement is implicated in every kind of membranal proliferative nephropathy. So the two types that people generally split this into are immune complex deposition, 
and that is seen in cryoglobulinemia and monoclonal gammopathy. Another thing I want to point out is HEP and kidney uh, glomerular disease are high yield. And what I used to get confused on is HEP B and HEP C, which one is more strongly associated with what. But the phenomena of cryoglobulinemia, which is seen in hepatitis C, is strongly associated with membrane proliferative. So that's how I remember that hep C, which also starts with a C, just like cryoglobulinemia, has a strong association with membrane proliferative. So if you see the GBM and mesangium involved, know that that has a stronger association with hep C than hep B. The second type of membrane proliferative is an inherited C3 defect. So this is um, innate to somebody. And so that is what causes the complement activation. And lastly, notice that I split the diagnosis into two types. Well, actually, part of the pathophysiology of membrane proliferative glomerulonephritis is that the mesangial deposits split the glomerular basement membrane and create that tram track appearance on electron microscopy. The last thing I'm going to go over is minimal change disease. So minimal change disease is normal on light microscopy. Electron microscopy shows the effacement of foot processes. The way that I remember the kind of peculiarities of this is it can occur, it, it oftentimes occurs in children, and it can happen to any in any kind of change or major change in the immune system. So it can be in response to even a not severe or, or non-severe infection. It ends with an AL, and that is really cool because only albumin is lost in minimal change disease. The other uh, nephropathies, the other nephrotic syndromes, they lose more than albumin. In this case, you only use albumin. You don't use any of the gamma proteins or anything. So I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, please support me by subscribing and click the bell icon for instant notifications. And thank you so much for my subscribers.